Hi, this is Nancy McClelland, and this video is for the Scrap Mania Copic Card Class uh, that's in November of 2020. And we are going to do four cards. And what you basically will have in your pack is the papers that I used. It's out of the Craft Consortium uh, Craft Papers Metal Textures line. And you have four pieces of paper that I used for the cards, plus you're getting these six additional papers that are double-sided that are just yours to use for whatever project that you may want. So you're actually going to be getting ten papers, the four that I actually chose out of the pack for the cards, and then the extra six sheets. They're great papers, and you can choose to use these, or you could use something else uh, for these cards. The basic instruction for this is going to be um, on basically Copic coloring. So in your packet, you're going to have the uh, card bases and then all the pieces parts. And this one card has a really fun decal uh, strip on that, and that is uh, made with the Copic not with Copic, it was made with my scissors, that my deco scissors, that I probably will never get rid of this pair of scissors. I've had many, many decorative scissors, but this one I will probably always have. Then uh, I actually have in my possession now one of the new tonic Tim Holtz deco cutter trimmers. It was very, very cool. It's an interesting um, new trimmer, and they are in stock at Scrap Mania. And they will cut that deckle edge, which is much easier than the scissors. So these now are in stock and they're fun. So we featured that piece in this set of cards. So you have your card bases and you have all of the pieces parts in this kit for these four cards. So you have uh, all the pieces on Copic Express It paper and then you have the the pieces to put them together now i always color on a piece of either cardboard or some type of a board this is actually just a white piece of paper because of color will transfer through so you want something that's going to be a uh, porous surface so this is the first one which is really really fun that is um these are darcy's images and I thought it was quite fitting for what was going on in the world. And this one is a really cute fire extinguisher. And it's, I put the sentiment on there, when life hands you a dumpster fire. And when you've got that, when life hands you a dumpster fire, inside this we do have a sentiment that I gave you. It says, I'll be there for you. But we're going to start coloring this with... Um, the grays and the reds so i'm gonna do the top of the hose part first and i'm going to be using on that one the c1 c3 and c5 and i'm laying down a little bit of c5 to begin with because that's my darkest color just getting it in those crevices then i'll be able to pull out the color with my c3 and then end up with my c1 and blend it together when these images are so tiny like this you really you don't have to add a lot of uh, blending and lots of different areas of shading in there but i've added a little bit and i also find that when you use these um, darker markers it's easy to pull it out uh, just in these tiny spots so we're going to do the hose part at the top and just blend that together now I'm going to switch to the red and I'll finish up the the bands on the fire extinguisher at the end and I'm putting a little bit of an R20 just in like the tongue of the mouth just to make it a little bit um, lighter as I said, these are cutesy images and the fire extinguisher has a mouth. So I will be using on this particular image, I'll be using the R14, the R29, and an R39. And 
I want this to be a little bit brighter red, so that's why it's probably one of my favorite colors is, you know, in combinations is I kind of start with that, that brighter color and I'm flicking off of the sides and I will leave a white area in the middle, but I'm just flicking it in. Again, I turn my paper as I flick it out, laying it on the side and just flicking it through. I will then use my R29 and I'm going to add just, again, a little bit less color. I'm not going to take it as far. This is, again, kind of a basic, basic blending. And we're going to pull that out. And you can see I've just, I've still left the white in the middle. Now I'm going to go in with the R39. And I'm going to strengthen that outside line on the edge. I, I don't need a lot of this R39, but that will strengthen the edge and again, give me some cylinder appearance on this image. I'm coming back now with the R29 and pulling a little bit of that color out and blending it all in. We can pick up some color off of a palette or you can do a tip to tip blending if you think you need a little more definition of color. I do more palette blending or I can pick up the, uh, the ink that's in the top of my caps. So then I can also pull in with the R14 now here and just strengthen that all the way through. I've gotten rid of the lines that where I, you know, shaded everything. And I think it looks pretty good. And as I said, you can take some circles and just work that through. I'm also going to pick up just a little bit of color off of the block. I'm putting down my R39 and just adding a little bit more definition on the sides. Um, I might even do a little bit more if I was really concept if this image was much bigger, but these images are pretty tiny, so they really don't require a lot of extra shading. But I think you get the cylinder out of that. So that's the basic part of the can, and then what we will have to do is we'll have to do the top part of the of the fire extinguisher. So it's basically going through the exact same motions again where we pull in the R14 just off of the edges to get started. Then we'll go to the R29 and we'll add just a little less color in there just to give us that definition in the corner. Now I am going to put a little bit, I'm going to go actually the marker down to the corners of the cylinder because of that is the top and the sill of the cylinder and I want it to have a little bit more definition so then I can go ahead and take my marker and I'm picking up a little bit of that color also to help blend it out as I pull that out with my R14. So I'm just helping that move a little bit to get to the center and that gives it a lot of definition and makes it look like it's, you know, got that shape to it. So I hope that gives a little bit of information, you know, a little bit of help to get that cylinder and just practice. Now we do have to go back and do the bands and I did those in gray and I'm starting and just laying down some C1 uh, on there and it's just kind of conditioning the paper at that point. Then I'll go back. I'm going to go to my C5. This I'm going to jump all the way to C5 and put the edges down and a little bit darker and then I can take my C3 and help pull that together a little bit. And then I can finish it off going back to my C1. In tiny areas like this, a lot of times I will jump from my lightest to my darkest, then back to my middle. Um, I just, I think it works good for me, especially when I'm doing this type of thing. And I think you need to figure out what works for you if that's a good way for you to, to work with it. And I find on these tiny images, as I don't want them to get away. So 
Now I need to put something at the bottom of the uh, fire extinguisher just so it looks like it's more grounded. It's not just floating in the air. So this is where I typically go and take like my W markers. And so I'm going to take some W1, just flicking down some strokes at that point. Now I could stop here, but I am going to take my W3 and just add a little more depth of color. Once again, you can see I'm not taking it all the way out to where I did it before. And then I'll come back with my W1 and just kind of soften that edge. And that's, that's all it takes at that point. So this image has been completed. It's, it's a really fast image. And then you'll put this little decal strip at the bottom of there just for a little bit of pop of color and just to add some, some uh, little more interest to the card. So that one has been completed. The next one that we're going to do is this is the little um, hedgehog. And it says, every little thing will be all right. Now we're sticking to a fair amount of the same colors and I chose to use uh, some yellow tones and some W tones on this one. Again, you could make it as neutral as you want. It could be into a brown. You could make this all gray. Um, an E40 series would probably work well with this. Even if you only have an E20 or an E30, and even to those E50s, any of the brown tones would be fine. But I chose to put a little bit of a warmth into the quill. So once again, this is a, just a cartoony type of character. So I'm starting out and I'm just basing with an E50 just to be a little more warmth, um, just like coming where the face and the belly would be. So I'm using an E50 on this one to start with. And I just a little bit of base tones on there. Now I am going to get my R20, I mean, R, yeah, R20. And again, I'm going to flick in some of the, the cheek color and this can be blended. It could be left exactly like this um, and it would be fine. But I am going to go back with my E50 and try to soften out the edges just a little bit. Once again, these are not realistic. They're just more of a, you know, a fun little image. So they're going to be kind of cutesy. And I'm going to put a little bit of color on the belly and then I'm going to work that out too. So and things will dry out a little differently and I'm just trying to move that and soften that out. So that's the E50 and the R20. Now I'm going to need to do his um, little ears so I just kind of popped a little bit of the R20 up there too. And you could use any color. I, this is kind of what I use for my, my cheeks also on my people. So you could use an E95. You could use anything that's kind of got that pinky tone if you want to. Now I'm going to base this hedgehog, you know, out with my W marker to begin with. So we're going to do a W0 on here and I'm just laying down some color and I'm doing that one little section right there just to, you know, I'm, I'm not going to do the whole thing at one time because I need to keep it on, you know, keep it in a, um, a wet edge. So now I'm coming back with the W1 and I'm, again, the sides of what I would consider the cheeks, I'm trying to put in a little color and up around the ears just to, again, we're trying to build a little definition and then we're going to flick out a little bit of where the the nose is there. So you could use just two markers if you don't have, you know, a lot of markers. What I would do is if you didn't have multiple markers, then I would let it dry and then go back and add more because the more you layer the same color, it is going to get darker. So I've come back with the W1, I mean W0, and I'm just kind of blending that all together and giving it some definition once again to show with the W1 that we've you know got around the cheeks and up around the nose part. So now I'm going to do the little pause 
hands, whatever you want to call them. And then we will do his body. So it's going to be a little bit, they're going to have a little more definition where we, the arms or the paws, they join the body and up around the body to create the, the round part of the image. And then just a little bit down where his feet are. Again, not a lot of shading is required. And if you don't have different markers, again, just coloring the image would be perfectly fine. You don't have to do a lot of shading. It will be okay. You can always go back and add just a little bit more color. And, you know, I believe sometimes that little bit of a line that is a little harsher doesn't, isn't always a bad thing. It can always be just added to there and it doesn't have to be blended in. It gives you that definition. So I think he's looking pretty good as he dries out. And now what we're going to need to do is we're going to start on the quills. And I've chosen the Y21 on here. And so I'm going to lay a layer of Y21 all the way around here and I'll turn my paper and I will lay in the Y21. Now I've done that, my video cut off a little bit, but I did that and then I just came back in the opposite direction with my, with my uh, W1 and finished it out. I'm sorry that part of the video is gone, but I think it's pretty obvious that I just used the yellow, the Y21 in, then I just kind of went out from the hedgehog and flicked out some Y1 and, and that's all I did. Now we're going to do the little hearts. I chose to color them in on the R20. Then I picked up some color. I had this um, uh, R39 sitting back in there, or you could add the uh, R29. I just added a little bit of shadow, picked it up with my, my R20, and filled in the little parts on the side to give them a little shadow. And you wouldn't have to, to do that at all. But... It just kind of gives it a little bit of, of, a, of an effect of the shadow there. So, this image is done. Now what I'm going to do is, well, I'm not done yet. I forgot. I'm not done. I need to put some Winkastel and I have a scarf that I have to do. So, I like to put uh, clear Winkastella and and on different things. So I'm actually going to put the the clear wink of Stella on the hearts just to give a little glitzy, just a little bit of fun, sparkle. And then I need to do a scarf. So on his scarf, I'm just going to do every other one uh, of his scarf. It, it could be the blue color. I chose to bring in a little bit of that blue that was in the background of the paper. Once again, if you choose a different paper that you want to mount him on, then that'll be fine. But I'm going to start with the B21, and I am going to just do every other one of those with the B21, and then we will pick out the YG23. I made his scarf basically blue and a little bit of green. And so I chose like a YG23. So you could pick any colors that you want for the scarf. The scarf could be all red if you didn't want to introduce another color. But I just thought that I would bring in another color for some interest of the card. So very simple, didn't do anything, but add that color down there. So I am going to put a tiny little bit of pink on his paw. I thought that the inside of his hands, maybe those would be a, a tad pink. So I decided on this one to try it and see what it would do. And then I'll take my W marker and just kind of pull it in and blend it in and soften it. I thought that might be kind of cute. I've never seen a real hedgehog, so I have no idea what they look like. Uh, Winkastel on the scarf. And the last thing I have to do is his nose. 
and you could choose to make it any color you want. I want to make it black. You could use a Sharpie marker. You could use a Micron marker. You could use a Copic marker. I have this jelly glaze marker and I'm going to just put the little glaze pen on there and it'll be black. Finishes up that card. So that's two cards down. And the next one we have is like the little squirrel. And it looks like a squirrel or a fox. It's, you know, it could be whichever one. It says nothing, compare, nothing, nothing compares to you. So we're making it a squirrel. And I'm sticking with the same colors. Um, I've got the E50 which I'm putting a little bit of color in the tops of his ears. I'm doing his belly with a little bit of E50. Then we're going to do some R20 uh, and a little bit of color of R20 on his belly. And we'll blend that in with some more of the E50 just to get a little more variation. Um, when you have animals like this, trying to find some neutrals, Again, just like white. White is, you have to find something to make white. So um, when I've got something like this, I, I need to find variations of colors. So I'm sticking again with the W markers for the body of the animal. And I want the middle part to be as light as possible. So that's where I am coming up and I'm going to be using my W marker. And that's going to be the W0. So I'm pulling out my W0, W1, and W3 again. And we will start in the center, that V portion, and we will color that because that part will probably just stay that color. Most of it, it's the lighter color, and it'll stand out. I could have gone opposite with a darker color. It wouldn't, you know, make any difference at that point. So you, you pick what you want. And I'm choosing to soften the little part of his belly with a little bit of that W color. So I need to go in and I need to just base kind of color this tiny image. I'm doing in circles and I'm doing in sections once again. Just because it's still small, I need to keep it in sections so I can control some of the, uh, the tones that I'm putting in there and the shading and I can get my blending to work. So I've gone back with a W1, just adding a little bit of color again underneath his chin, back behind his tail where things, you know, try to get a little circular on the tail. We will add a little bit of the W3 just to give a little more definition where the tail is and a little more depth. And you could add a whole lot more if you wanted to. But I am trying to make these some real quick and, you know, easy cards for you. So we're looking at the W1 and blending out that W3. And then we can come back in with the W0 at the end and blend everything together. Then we have, it's interesting that that one little paw on that side looks, his hand looks totally different. And I don't know that it's anything different than the one on the other side. It was just interesting when I drew this. So one of them must have his hand out and the other one just has his, his little paw under. But I'm doing the same thing that I've been doing on the uh, images before. Just a little bit on the bottoms of his feet. Trying to give you a little bit of a cylindrical type of body. And then get his uh, under his chin there's some tiny little areas that I can just add the touch of the W3 just for a little depth. And then we can blend all that out. Because again, this is a small little image, doesn't take a lot. But I've laid down a little bit of color and then we're blending it in. I have that last little hand, paw, whatever we want to call it over there. Because I always tease that these are... These really, they, they aren't really real images, are they? So we're going to give him a little bit of a, of his pink inside paw on that one again. 
So I'm hoping that you can, you know, work with some of these images again, find some colors that you like. Um, if you want this to be a gray squirrel and you don't have your W's, just pick, if you've got some gray tone, you could do that. Or as I said, pick a brown tone. So I am going back in now again and I'm just basing his face with a W0. And then we'll start adding a little bit of dimension here um, on the image around where his, I, you call it the nose type of thing. You know, the more I look at him, I think he's more of a fox. But again, these are cutesy images and it really doesn't make a lot of difference what the image is um, when they're kind of cartoony like this. So we're just creating a face that has a little bit of, of depth to it, trying to get a little bit around this. And these will be very similar to coloring faces on people. We need to create the face and get the round. And I'm putting in some bright color, like an, it's the um, R, R20 for his little cheeks but I've gone back in with the E50 just to soften that and give us a little more color and that will kind of match what's on his belly there. And then we'll come back in and we will fade all of this back out with our gray marker. So it's just taking some steps, doing little things at a time. And then we're going to just try to add a little more definition at the end just so you can see the animal. You could probably even take this animal and color him up and possibly even use um, the texturizing of, uh, with like a piece of towel if we wanted to, just to kind of create that texture. But as I'm letting this go and adding tiny little strokes and a little bit of color at a time, and as this dries, it's all going to pretty much blend together. I find that images when you're coloring like this, they, they do look a lot different when they get done. So now we have a scarf and we have the nut. So we are going to do his scarf and I'll do the scarf just like I did the other scarf, except this one is going to be into blue. And so I am using on this one, um, we're doing a BG triple zero. I chose to make it a little bit more of a blue green. So I'm just using my BG triple zero. Then I'm going to use BG 72, which is just a darker blue green color and just coloring the leftover pieces of it. Simple, simple scarf. And he was with a relatively neutral um, background paper. There is kind of a grayish color in that. So the last thing that we do is the nut. And you can choose any color, but I thought I would try to go with the colors of the paper a little bit. So I chose the E13. And then I have an uh, just a simple E25 to do the... Uh, top of the acorn and the little um, stem. And I can pick up just a tiny amount. I have some marker ink. I have ink in my, my cap. I'll pick up a little bit with the tip of my E13 and just add a little bit on the bottom of that um, acorn where it's laying kind of on the ground. Now you can pick any green that you want. Um, some of my favorite greens are in the YG series, so this is YG63. I'm not doing anything but coloring the leaf green. That's it. No shading. Done. Simple, simple, simple. Now we have to put in something for uh, the ground, and I want it to have a little more character than just the W, so one of my other fun colors that I always use is YG93, so it's going to give us a little more warmth, and so 
uh, YG91, excuse me. I'm laying down the YG91, carrying it over so that it's underneath the nut. Then I will go and I will pick up, you know, my W marker. So I'm going to do the W1 and put a little bit more color just in the gray. Can't go back to a W0 because that would probably take away the color. It would work kind of like a uh, colorless blender, but just two colors and there it is. It's done. I've, I've put down a ground that basic, basically creates the fact that the acorn and the animal are not floating in air. So Wink Estella on the little uh, scarf is what I'm going to do. And then um, his nose once again. I'm going to put a little black nose, so I'm going to choose to use the black glaze pen. And that is done. So then we have the last one, and this one is, I'm sorry, that turned out to be a complete and total dumpster fire. So I thought the dumpster was really, really cute. I decided not to use a red dumpster. I know that there are lots of red dumpsters out there, but I decided that I wanted to make it a blue dumpster. So um, I'm going to start with the fire first. And I'm choosing some yellow tones. And yellows are kind of bright and fluorescently in the Copic line. But I, I think the Y13, 15, and 17 relatively stay less fluorescent. So I'm taking the 13 and I'm, I'm not being careful to get to every corner, not being perfect, but I'm laying down some color. Now I need to start adding some depth of color and I'm going to add now the, the Y17 and the Y15. So I'm going to do Y15 next and you can see that's getting me a fair amount more color. There's more saturation of color here. It's a little grayer. Following up some of those lines from that, you know, were drawn in there by the artist with the fire. I'm going around the mouth of the fire and just adding in some like flamey strokes. Okay. So then I'm going to pick up the Y17 and now we've gotten a lot more of an orange tone, but it's getting into really dark yellows and again I'm following some of those tones and if I had waited a little longer maybe and let everything dry there'll be even more streaks but I don't think it was as important to do that because I really want this to kind of have just an all over fiery type of look so I'm just flicking out some color in here and letting it go up so that it is just looks like a fire. My fire on this example and the fire that I put together on the original card, they're going to look a lot different. I'm adding the YR04 to get the orange in there and you can see I'm just kind of flicking in some strokes. So this one is not as blended as the other one, but I like them both. Again, I, you don't have to blend them out at all and I think that they they look fine that way. If you want even more depth of red, I picked up the cap. I had the R14 still sitting there and just put in a little bit more of a red orange in the bottom just for even more depth. I mean we could get into a lot more depth in the bottom of that. But I really do like the fire and I like the fact that it's not, you know, blended and you just kind of see the fire there. So, that's what my fire looks like on that card. So, just think about adding the yellows and you could, again, if you don't have all those colors, do some yellow and some orange and you can just keep adding layers. So, we have a mouth or teeth or whatever on this dumpster, which is kind of funny. You know, and then I put some little cheek colors. I just put some little circles there just to give it some cheeks because I thought it would be funny to have a little bit of the cheek color in there. And I want my dumpster to be blue. So now I am going to be using the B21. And I'm going to start uh, just 
kind of laying in some color. I'm going over the cheeks. I'm going to try to stay away from the mouth part, but I want the cheeks to also kind of blend out, and I, that's it's fine that they've got the blue on there. You could make this be a rusty dumpster if you wanted to. It could be a brown dumpster. Any color that you want. There really isn't anything um, that that says this is the color it should be. I uh, chose a real steel-like pattern with a diamond pattern to it. So it's just grays. Um, so pick whatever dumpster color. And if you are really good at coloring something in one color over another one, maybe that's what you what you want it to be. So I chose blue. This blue series is different than the blue series that I used on my other cards example. And all I'm doing is going around with now the B24, just trying to, where you'd have portions of the dumpster that has raised area of metal. I'm just going around it and putting in some color. And one thing about a dumpster, it's going to have scratches. It's not going to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I put in some of the darker colors, come back in, color it with the B21, let things just kind of blend together. So pretty simple. You just have some different areas around there. Then I'll go back to the back side. Now the back side again, because it is going back, it could be darker than the front side. And I've just laid a little bit of color on the 21. Again, I really don't need to leave a lot of highlights on this one. So like where I leave white space but now I'm coming back in with a B24 and then I will use the B26 and add in some even more depth of color because it's going back in the back. So I'll get this the back corner and where it's underneath the dumpster, the lid, the plastic lid that's usually on a dumpster and then coming up from the bottom. Just giving it a little bit of definition there and making it look like it is going back that 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 piece of metal is going back and then I'm just blending it up so it should be darker pretty simple so going back in just emphasizing a couple of the corners and again you can emphasize this when it's when it's uh, dry again it'll get a little bit more of definition when it is dry and it you know isn't wet and it's going to blend in so that's why I go back and I add some of those darker colors and then I can come back in and color it in and finish it out with my um, lighter color at the end but that's why I go back and add the definition so that it's had a chance to dry and it won't just all bleed out and blend in and you don't notice it I have enjoyed laying a little bit more of these harder edges. I think it makes a little more interest into the final image when you do have things like that. Um, it may look odd to the naked eye, but I think when you look at it in general, it looks really nice. So we're kind of got the dumpster part. I'm going to finish up, I think, just uh, with the top of the railing we have just a little bit of blue on that that again could be black it could be gray it could be blue so it's kind of your interpretation of what parts on this dumpster need to be what color as i said it's a comedic dumpster there these are just cutesy cartoony type of characters but i thought these sets from darcy's were just you know so much fun and the dumpster and the fire extinguisher were on one and then the hedgehog and the squirrel slash fox are on the other and so there's two different sets here and there are there are no um dies for this they would be pretty easy to fussy cut if you wanted to or use a scan and cut but there are no dies for for these uh this line of of stamps now I need to color my wheels and so they're going to be kind of dark and again they could be 
they could be rusty, they could be black, but I'm just adding a little bit of definition with the C1, C3, and a little bit of C5 to show the bottoms of them or where they're kind of shaded at there, and, and that's all that has to be done on those. And then finalize blending that in. So that's the wheels on the dumpster. Then we have the lid, and again, it could be black, it could be gray, but again, trying to do black with the definition with the ridges on the top of it, I've chosen to do the C1 just to kind of coat it around the edges a little darker, and then we'll do a little bit more dark on the back, to, and then leaving it light on the front, just so we can keep a little bit of that definition towards the back and we can keep those light ridges on there. There are some other dumpster spots around the fire that you could either do in blue or in the, the gray tones. So we're just finishing up adding some color into that top lid there and then we'll blend that out. using just our C1, C3, C5. And again, this could be any other color that you want it to be. I, I believe that if you can get two neutrals, I think I've said this in the past, I would always pick up my W's or my C's. And it probably isn't important that you have much more than some of the ones from five. You know, you can pick up odds, you can pick up evens, but try to pick up every other one, maybe. So we finished up that. I put a little bit of R20 in the mouth section of the of the little fire, and I'm putting the Winkostella on the fire. So I went ahead and put a little bit of Winkostella on the lips of the uh, fire extinguisher. I forgot to do that one before. So now we have our images done. We have four of all these images done. And they're very simple to put together. So you, you have your packet with all the pieces parts. Every one of them will have a black backer piece, which is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. Just a smaller, it's a little bit larger than what the die that I cut the images out of. So they've all got that. Then you can see that I've mounted them onto the paper and then I've kept some paper on the, uh, off the sides where I've actually done a little bit more decorating on the inside with the strip. And that's totally what you want to do. So here is my suggestion on your pieces of paper. You have a six by six piece of paper that I've given you. To make the best use of the paper, I believe that you need to take, it doesn't make any difference how you take the six by six, but you should take the six by six and make the first cut at five and a quarter inches all the way down. Okay, so that should leave you a three quarter inch piece on the side that you're gonna save. Then you're going to turn it and you want to cut it at four and a quarter. So you have a piece of paper that is five and a quarter by four and a quarter. So all of the four papers can be cut the same way. That's my suggestion of how you can use the papers if you want to use the strip on the inside as like an accent that I have. So you will, you will put those You'll cut them all like that. Then what will happen is you, you have two top folding cards and you have two side folding cards. And you'll have bases for those. So this will lay um, in, at the four and a quarter wide by five and a quarter. And it's going to have like a quarter of an inch little piece of the white card. I'll only move this up here so you can see that it doesn't go from top to bottom, but you have a quarter of an inch band at the top of that, but it does go side to side. Then you're going to lay this four and a quarter piece in the center of that. So that's how 
every card's going to look on the outside. Everyone's going to have the decorative piece and then the black, and then you're going to have your image. Then on the inside, you're going to have pieces. You're going to have some longer pieces of black and some shorter pieces. The fact that if you have a side folding, you're going to have a longer piece. And then the accent piece that you cut off, that three quarter inch piece is going to lay on top. So it's, do you want to decorate the inside of your card just with some pieces? Then I took one of these on the scroll and I just put a little like triangle up in the top. So it's totally up to you what you want to do if you like you know to put this little it was an inch and uh quarter i think um square and then i just cut the square again down to a triangle so use the pieces that you've got to put your cards together uh it's very very simple because you'll have you know these cards that have all these extra pieces with them and you can put all this together and use the stuff that I've given you, like there's the dumpster fire one, and you can see it's they're all put together the same way. The little bit of edge at the top. Then we have the, the accent strip on the inside. So that's been cut off that three-quarter inch piece, and they're all like that. Then the ones that do the, the top fold ones, they're going to basically just have a, a smaller piece on the bottom. But the one with the fire extinguisher has the sentiment okay so i'm just showing you that we have all these pieces that you can put in there and how they're all gonna go you cut down your pieces to make them work and you can accent your cards i like the extra little bit because the cards are plain you may choose not to do that you may think that it you know it doesn't need that um, but it's totally up to you i wanted you to have the pieces parts to work with so they could look like the cards that I have. I think it gives you a, a little bit of extra in there. So you will have instructions with the colors that I used. You'll have these written instructions that you'll have and then you have this video link that you can refer back to. So these four cards Lots of fun. If you have any questions, give me a call, email me, and I will be more than happy to help you through the process of what to do with these Copic cards. I hope you enjoy this class, and hopefully we can do all this again for you. Thanks for joining us.